Team Gamer here, and yes, I just got Emily, and I am going to be making the test run video, of course, um, explaining what basically Emily does and what Emily um, is capable of, etc., etc., and just test her out in general. So, um, of course, um, this is just my first impression, so um, I am basically going in blind, semi-blind, but um, well, without any further ado, let's just test her out. So, um, Emily is a burning support. Yeah, uh, the worst team in the game, by the way. Um, the burning support, um, which is, I mean, she's pretty good. And that's because, um, she fulfills her niche really, really well. And see there, look at that damage. Um, she also gets a permanent burning effect on, um, on characters. So yeah, they're just gonna keep on having Pyro over and over again. Which is pretty nice against, um, uh, pretty nice for characters that do use a lot of, uh, well, I guess I could just say, um, that use a lot of, uh, pyro reactions, like, uh, like Ayaka with Melt, or with, um, of course, Dendro teams with Burning. Um, you can also use it for Vaporize teams, so, um, yeah, basically... What Emily is, is a burning support that can basically permanently um, affect opponents with uh, pyro application. So yeah. Um, well, of course I'm going to be um, continuing on, of course. So um, here is Emily's uh, normal attacks right here. So one, two, three, four. That is four basic attacks. Pretty nice. Here's her charge. There we go. Pretty cool. Um, her E, of course. The lantern. Um, you can also affect it with Pyro, I think, but it has to be affected with an enemy. But this lantern lasts a pretty long time, as you see there. Look at the cooldown of my skill. And look at how long it dissipates. Yeah, look, it stays there forever. Yeah, pretty nice, right? So, um, she basically has 100% uptime on her elemental skill. As you see there, pretty nice. So you can just cast it again. And there we go, it's back. So, um, this is a level 2 lantern right here. Um, her burst gives her a level 3 lantern, um, which is pretty nice. And that's pretty much it for uh, Emily's kit. So let's go over the Hoyoverse build and let's see what she's got. So, it looks like pretty good stats right here. E, uh, ER is at 135, pretty nice. Um, crit rate, crit damage is pretty nice too. Um, pretty nice, yeah. Uh... Lumi Dose Elegy is her best weapon, of course. Um, gives her 15% uh, attack, and when she triggers burning, um, the damage is increased by 18% with a max of two stacks, which is pretty nice. Uh, when the two stacks are reached, or when the uh, duration is refreshed, she gets 12 energy back, um, which is pretty nice. And she could trigger these off field. So she basically increases damage and she gets energy back. Um, as long as you get the two stacks, which is pretty good. Um, you get a lot of damage in as well as get energy back for her burst. And her burst is pretty, pretty good too. So yeah. Artifact set, unfinished, revere, or reverie, um, which is her best set, of course, because it affects her kit. Um, because it is a burning artifact set. Yeah. Um, people were wondering what this artifact set was for because it was kind of useless until we realized that it might be because of a new character. And well, it is Emily. So as you see here, she gets increased damage by 50%. Um, as long as she is off field, which is pretty nice. Um, if there are, uh, no burning opponents as well, um, this effect will, uh, basically... Um, decreased by 10% per second. But um, her whole main gimmick is that she uh, puts burning on every character or on every enemy in the game. So um, this is going to be triggering a lot. So yeah. Um, also, when burning opponent exists, it will increase by 10% damage. Okay. Until it reaches 50%. So pretty nice. So uh, yeah. Um, so you get 50% increased damage on top of another 50% increased damage. Um, so yeah. Um, it is really, really, really good. So you get a 100% increased damage as long as you trigger burning, which is nice. So yeah. Um, as for talents, we could see here. So her normal talent, um, is just four normal attacks, a charge, plunge. It's just your basic, 
um, normal attack, you're never gonna be using this because her whole kit is based on her elemental skill and burst. So yeah, her elemental skill, um, I already discussed about it before, but it just leaves a lantern on the field. And um, the more burning opponents that you get, the uh, the more levels you get on your lantern. Um, and of course, it goes up to level 2 lantern, and it does a bajillion gajillion damage. And also, leaves the opponent on the burning state. Permanently, by the way, as long as you keep your lantern up on the field, which is really, really good. So yeah, as you see there, look at the scaling on that. Level 2 scaling. Pretty nice. <laughs> it is really, really nice. And also, yeah... 14 seconds skill cooldown. Um, pretty nice too. Um, the Thorn Interval is 10 seconds, which is pretty nice. So it just leaves you with the 4 uh, second window. Um, also, the uh, Lumidos case duration, the Lantern, is 22 seconds long. So it is permanent. It is a permanent uptime, um, which is pretty nice. And her level 3 um, is literally the same thing as her level 2, but she gets a level 3 Lantern. Um, and also, it drops Scent Dews um, every second. Um, which is pretty nice. So she just gains more dendro damage, um, which is pretty, pretty good. So yeah. Um, but as you see here, look at the damage. Cooldown is pretty nice. Energy cost is pretty nice too. So yeah. Um, her whole kit in general is just based around burning. You just want the lantern up on the field so that you're able to do uh, burning damage and have the pyro application um, on the field at all times. So that is her main uh, role as a uh, burning support. Um, and we can see our passive talents here. So each time, uh, each time it collects two cents, the level of two Lumidos case will consume cents and release Clear Dew Cologne that deals AOE dendro damage equal to 600% of Emily's attack to opponents. This damage is not considered elemental skill damage. So um, the main reason why you want to uh, stack attack on her, um, on your subs and on your main, um, mainly uh, your third piece uh, set, of course. Uh, having a main stat of attack percent is because of this 600% of your attack that is really 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 high scaling and you should take advantage of that it is really really good and also all you need to do is collect two cents that is pretty easy since it drops cents all the time her E and her Q it drops cents all the time so you're able to get this for free by the way so yeah and it's every time every time the level 2 um, case will consume a scent. And all you need to do to trigger a scent is burning. Yeah, pretty easy, right? <laughs> so yeah, um, this skill is really, really, really good. It's just a big burst AOE dendro damage burst. So yeah. And as for her second passive talent, this is her supportive passive talent. So um, Emily's damage increases to burning opponents based off her attack with every 1,000 attack, increasing damage by 15%. The maximum damage bonus that can be gained this way is 36%. So, yeah, this is really, really, really good. So, um, basically, you want her attack to be at least around 2,000 because that would be at least 30% damage bonus. If you want to go overkill and if you want the extra juicy 6% attack, um, then you can go... Um, 3,000, I guess, but at that point, it's just overkill. Um, 30% um, to damage bonus is really, really, really good. So, um, try to get at least 2,000 attack on your Emily. Um, if you want to go overkill and if you want the 6 extra percent, then go for 3,000 attack. And as for her other passive talent, this is her overworld passive talent, and it's actually pretty good because it works on Abyss too. So, when a Lumidos case is created, aka the Lantern, um, is on the field. All party members gain 85% pyro res against burning damage. So um, this is really good on the overworld because you're going to be burning grass a lot. And well, if you're burning, you get 85% pyro res, which is pretty good. Also, this works in Abyss too. So basically, uh, enemies that do pyro damage against you, you're a tank. You're an absolute tank. As long as you uh, have the burning status effect on yourself, um, you will get 85% pyro res. Yeah, pretty busted, really. And this is a overall passive talent that works on Spiral Abyss. So yeah, um, really, really, really good. And as for constellations, I am going blind here. So we're going to see what these are. But I'm pretty sure these are pretty broken. So let's see here. Constellation level 1 increases the damage dealt by Fragrance Extraction and her passive talents Clear Dew Cologne, Lingering Fragrance by 20%. The latter requires unlocking said passive talent first. So Fragrance Extraction, that is this. 
Um, fragrance extraction? E. Yeah, her E. So, her E... Um, her E gets her damage increased by 20%, and her passive talent also gets increased by 20%, which is pretty nice. Additionally, when nearby party member trigger the burning reaction on opponents or deal dendro damage to burning opponents, they will generate an additional scent. This effect can be triggered once every 2.9 seconds. So, this is pretty good too. Um, it means that you're just gonna be stacking scents a lot. And guess what? It combos well with... Yep. <laughs> so this is just going to be doing big damage, big damage. Um, AOV dendro damage bursts, which is honestly one of the most broken things I've ever seen in my life. So yeah, C1 is really good. C2. When fragrance extraction, romic explication, or clear dew cologne produced by the passive talent lingering fragrance, um, hits an opponent. Those opponents' dendro res is decreased by 30% for 10 seconds. Broken. 30% dendro res decrease as long as you do EQ or the passive talent is nice. Yeah. Really, really, really broken. Uh, 30% dendro res decrease. That's all I gotta say. As for, uh, Constellation 3, it just increases fragrance extraction, which is her... Yeah, it's her E. So, um, pretty nice. Her level 4 constellation, Romic Explication's duration is increased by 2 seconds. The interval between opponents being selected as the target of Ascented Dew is decreased by 0 0.3 per, uh, seconds. So um, this just increases the duration of her burst by 2 seconds. And also um, the interval of attacks uh, gets decreased by uh, 0.3 seconds, meaning that it's just going to be doing rapid fire uh, damage on burst, uh, which is pretty nice. So yeah, um, broken, broken, broken. Her Constellation 5 increases Aromic Explication by 3 levels, so that is her burst. And her Constellation 6, which is the uh, Whale Territory Constellation. When using Fragrance Extraction or, arom or Aromatic Explication, Emily will gain Abiding Fragrance for 5 seconds. So this is just an entirely new passive. While this is active, after Emily uses Normal or Charge Attacks, she will, she will generate 1 cent and her normal and charge attack damage will be converted into dendro damage that cannot be overridden. And the damage dealt will be increased by 300% of Emily's attack. So, when you get 1 cent, <laughs> when you get 1 cent, and also when you use Fragrance Extraction or Aromatic Explication, which is her base kit, when you do that, and when you use a normal or charge attack, she gets one cent. And afterwards, her normal and charge attacks will get be converted to dendro damage. So, yeah. And also, uh, that's not all. You get 300% of Emily's attack as that damage. So basically, as long as you do E and Q, and if you do a normal attack, you get one cent. You get dendro application on your normals. And those dendro applicated normals get 300% of Emily's attack as damage. That means she becomes a main DPS. This constellation makes her turn from a sub DPS into a main DPS. Yeah, there's nothing more to be said. Th this is broken. If you really do want your Emily to be a main DPS, this is the constellation to get. I'm pretty sure that's every single character um, constellation C6 though, because that just makes everyone a main DPS, like Yelon. Yelon is a sub DPS, but if you do have her C6, she becomes a main DPS. So yeah, um, that's basically it for her constellations. They look all look really good, but um, at the end of the day, Emily is really good without constellations. So um, yeah, well, I guess I could just discuss about my final thoughts on her. So Emily right now is really, really, really good. I'm not joking. She's really, really, really good. Like one of the best dendro characters in the game by far and well since natlin is coming out and natlin is all about pyro she's just gonna be elevated even further so if you really do want to make an investment play and get emily um right now before uh natlin comes out you should because she's just probably going to be elevated to the max level um she also works well on teams um that aren't pyro like uh, Hydro or Cryo because you can trigger Melt and Vaporize, which is really, really, really good. Bergen is also really good too. It just got buffed because of uh, Emily. So yeah, you could thank her for that. 
Um, permanent power application on enemies is extremely, extremely, extremely good because the only characters that were able to just have kind of pyro application is Zhang Ling with Globa and Pyro Nato or Toma with Q. So yeah, Emily is a great, great addition to um, characters that really do need pyro application um, to do elemental reactions. So Emily right there is pretty good. And also, again, Natlin is going to come out very, very soon. So this is just going to be elevating Emily better. So I will say this right now. Emily is really good. Um, in the future, though, she might be one of the best characters in the game. No doubt. So yeah. Well, anyways, that is going to be it for uh, this test run. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys do enjoy it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Um, it really means a lot to me if you do like and subscribe. Uh, it helps me keep me motivated to make these videos um, a lot. So again, if you do like and subscribe, thank you guys so much for the support. It really means a lot to me. Also, comment down below. What do you think of Emily? You think she's good? You think she's bad? Um, what do you see in her in the future? You think she's going to be buffed to Oblivion because of Natlin? Or do you not think so and she'll just be just good? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Genshin video. And I'll see you guys in the next video.